Hi, I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. Thanks so much for choosing to watch this clip from our Small Town Big Deal YouTube channel. For full episodes, go to our website. Now, enjoy the video. A drive through Park County, Indiana feels like stepping back in time. The landscape is beautiful, especially when the leaves are changing colors. But they're just a backdrop for the main attraction. We're actually considered the cover bridge capital of the world. Wow. Yep. With 31 of these beauties in the county, that title goes uncontested. Amazingly, many of the wooden bridges are still used every day. And all are found in settings that look like they belong on canvas in an art gallery. They're such a priceless thing in our county. Boy, they sure are. Yeah. Park County, Indiana is a little more than an hour's drive west of Indianapolis. Most of the year, the population of the entire county is only about 17,000. But for two weeks every fall, it gets a little more crowded during the Park County Covered Bridge Festival. They estimate that it's one to two million people through the whole 10 days. One to two million people yes. come here? Yes. On <laughs> these country roads? Yes. I mean, that sounds like that can't be true, but it's just incredible. People from all across the U.S. and even other countries come to visit. And for many, it's getting to experience history firsthand. At one time, there were more than 50 covered wooden bridges in the county. Some have washed away in floods or storms over the years. But most have survived. The oldest dates back to 1856. That long ago, the engineering in that was pretty impressive. Oh, ahead of their time, really, yeah. because most of them being built in the 1800s, they didn't have the capabilities of having bulldozers right. and cranes and uh, everything that you would need with a modern yeah. convenience, and they did it all by hand and with horse. It's incredible. Wow. Some of these bridges are the actual bridges with the, the actual bridge. beams that was built Same 170 beam. years ago, yes. That yeah. blows my mind. It does, it does. And while we're admiring, we're also wondering, why build a covered bridge in the first place? Well, it's for the simplest reason that you could yeah. think of, and everybody tries to complicate it. It was just to try to keep them dry. Keeping the bridges dry is still a top priority. You can see the holes that have developed in the roof of this bridge, but it's scheduled to get a new roof very soon. Park County never intended to become the covered bridge capital of the world. In fact, the main reason so many covered bridges are still standing today is because the county couldn't afford to replace them with more modern ones. It was an absolute godsend that we were poor because now it's one of the biggest money makers for the county. There is no doubt the bridges are a huge attraction for tourists. And one of the most iconic is the Bridgeton Covered Bridge that spans Big Raccoon Creek. When you come out to Bridgeton to see their beautiful bridge, you'll want to go next door to the old grist mill. But we recommend scheduling a little extra time if you run into the owner, Mike Rowe, because, well, he's quite the storyteller, especially on how he came to own the place. Mike had his eye on the old mill for years, but it was rarely open. One day, as he was driving by, he decided to stop. So I got up on the porch, and there was a piece of paper. Somebody had written mill for sale on it and nailed it to the building. I thought, nah, there's no way. Turns out it was true. The mill was on the market. I said, how much? They said 240,000. I said, I'll take it. But then he had to tell his wife. I said, on the way home, I spent a quarter of a million dollars. And she said, what the heck have you done now? But then he had to get a loan. Can you imagine trying to get an appraisal on this thing? I'll never forget, he says, no bank in their right mind is gonna loan you that kind of money for that broken down old building. Well, that's, that's a challenge. But Mike wouldn't give up. The family selling the mill helped him secure financing. He then put in years of restoration work on the mill, never giving up on his dream. And then, after all that work, Mike almost saw the dream he had created go up in flames. In 2005, an arsonist set fire to the bridge. It was destroyed, and the fire almost got to the mill. It's an absolute miracle this place didn't burn. Then something else miraculous occurred. The entire county came together, and with passion and determination, volunteers rebuilt the famous bridge. A massive undertaking, but a labor of love. There were about 13 of us who worked on a regular basis, some of them every day, some of us whenever we could, 
to put these things together, but it wasn't hiring crews to come do that. That was our people working together. Oh, oh I thought you hit your head. <laughs> and Mike worked on repairing the mail. He took us behind the scenes to show off his pride and joy. This is uh, the fly whale, six feet tall. The stone that grinds the grain is actually the original one brought to the U.S. 200 years ago. There's 2,800 pounds of stone came all the way from France to here in the early 1800s. There we go. The reason they went to so much trouble, that's freshwater quartz, which means it's harder than glass. They have an estimated life of 300 years, so these aren't even out of warranty yet. When Mike bought the mill, it was producing about 5,000 pounds of flour each year. Today, Mike's grinding out 40,000 pounds a year and loves every minute of it. Today, my wife talks like a lot of this was her idea. <laughs> Thanks for watching this clip from Small Town Big Deal. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and be sure to click the bell so you'll be notified when we upload new videos. Also, click the like button. To see full episodes, go to www.smalltownbigdeal.com.